Hi everyone, Toshia Hao, this is Aris Bakri. In this video, I'd like to showcase to you, share some few thoughts on how you could you know, open the sh offshore bank account for Malaysian or other nationality. So let's just get started. So yes, first thing first is that, let's address the elephant in the room, which is whether it's legal or not. The answer is, it's not illegal to open the open offshore bank account, which is like, you know, countries like uh, Mauritius, uh, Belize, and also uh, like also Switzerland, they allow non residents to open a, a bank account over there. So, so let's move on with the benefits and why you should open the offshore bank account. Um, there are several reasons which are, you know, you can open, you can receive payments in different currencies. Second is that you have the potential to be tax efficient savings. Third is the contingency savings. Which means that in such event where there are catastrophic tragedy like in Lebanon, Turkey and so on, their currencies are keep on dipping and dipping. So it really gives you the impression that yeah, so you really need to have some, some currency diversification, uh, to have something to fall back on in such that event could occur, you know, to where you are living at. So so this is something con to consider. So there are also other but additional benefits uh, that you can can consider also, like you know to have the privacy, asset protection, and moving on with the additional benefits, you can also like for example you have the Singapore bank account, you can also access to the local stock exchange, you can also invest in a local based brokerage account such as like Tiger Brokers, Asia with Singapore and so on. And when you have the Singapore dollars, you can also invest in the US stock market through the interactive brokers. And last but not least, you can have the real estate investment. And so so the good thing is for Malaysian, right, you can invest in the uh, these two banks, which are the CIMB Bank Singapore, and then second is the Maybank Singapore. So the requirement of this of these banks is that you need to have either of these uh, you know bank accounts in Malaysia. For example, in CIMB Bank Singapore, you have to have the CIMB Malaysia, and then the minimum deposit that you you have to get is the one thousand dollars, and there's no below fee. So when whenever there's a certain threshold to have the minimum balance, there's no fees being charged. And then for Maybank Singapore, you have to have the minimum deposit is five hundred dollars, and then the fall below fee is at two dollars. So the way that you can apply for CMB Bank Singapore is that you can do it online with the link that attached on the video description. And then Maybank Singapore, you need to do with the selected Maybank branch, whichever is in the form. But I recommend you to apply with the Maybank HQ because it gets things done fast. Because the the HQ in in Malaysia. So let's moving on with uh with other region that you could also explore uh, to have more options, whichever that you think it is good for. So let's moving on with Hong Kong, right? So they are considered as like the Asia financial hub, either top three or number one or top two. It's either you know they are competing between Hong between among the Tokyo or Singapore. So first of the first on the list is the HSBC. So you can open whichever the account that's uh, which account that you're trying to open. It really depends on the minimum deposit. Uh, the entry level which would, uh, would seem to be is the uh, HSBC one. And then the, the requirement is that you do have the utility bill address valid travel documents and then you can also apply online but you are required to be physical appointment and then second is the Hansang Bank so the Hansang Bank is that you need to have at least around you know around ten thousand dollars Hong Kong dollars or to up to fifty thousand Hong Kong dollars and then requirements also the same as uh, HSBC but the but the requirement, but to apply it, you need to apply it on site. So that's a downside. So I think um, all other banks, you need to apply uh, on site appointment. And then, yeah, so so that's uh, one of the, the key considerations when you're trying to open other, uh, when you're trying to open the 
offshore bank account abroad so which means that you need to travel over there and some countries or region they only yeah also open to do it online or through mail only so it really depends on which country that you are trying to apply for and i can recommend for hong kong also it's considered as one of the stable region uh, economically financially and also they have a they have the policy with china which is like the uh, greater bay area with involved with shenzhen and also macau and second is the uh, mauritius mauritius is one of the countries that that is uh, in the african continent so the the min minimum deposit is quite low actually uh, so that's a good thing one of the positive thing about opening an account in mauritius so the the, the minimum deposit is about 1000 to 5000 rupees and then requirement is that you need to have the same thing as in hong kong which is the utility address bill valid travel documents and the way that you need to apply is that you need to book appointment on site and this same to goes to with the requirement of the state bank of mauritius it's the same amount with the mcb and the requirement is also the same and then the, the way that you could apply on how to apply it is the same thing and um, sorry for the typo on uh, the opening in switzerland um, big mistake there so i have to address that um, but first thing first is that about the post finances about uh, 25,000 uh, Swiss franc I think that's what how I I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong and then the requirement is the to have the utility bill valid travel documents and then you need to have the appointment basis and one of the additional remarks to keep in mind when you open and you know any banks in, in Switzerland so that they have the monthly fees tra being charged yeah so that's the downside and then second is the UBS Switzerland it's one of the biggest bank in the world uh, can be compared like GP Morgan and also the rest of the banks that you could think of and then the the actual the actual minimum deposit is about ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars USD. So yes, so uh, there are also alternatives like you know like Wise or Revolu. So if you have Wise, Wise was already launched in Malaysia, uh, but then you have the maximum balance is only twenty thousand ringgit in USD. It's only about say about 5,000 USD and then for SGD it's around 7 or 6,005 6, around that amount so that's only li what's called a limited balance that you could store in WISE because Bank Nagara already set the, the maximum threshold that you could you could store the balance uh, in these new banks to avoid from the cannibalization of the uh, local currency so this is a standard practice in every country the second is the Revolut, so which means that it's the same thing like multi currency account, which uh, which you can earn in USD, AUD, SGD, and so on. Uh, similar like Wise, have the similar functions like Wise, but then a good thing about about Revolut is that it's crypto friendly. So in in Wise, if you're trying to deal anything with crypto, uh, you could be expecting some exposure from using the the Wise services. So that's the downside of WISE, it's not really crypto friendly. And then the second is that Revolut hasn't yet to be launched in, in, in Malaysia, right? So which means that you may need to open in other country uh, like Singapore or UK. And then their maximum balance account also have their you know, certain, certain number. For example, in Singapore, it's only $5,000, which is equivalent to around 15,000 ringgit or around that amount. Um, and then you can only open if you have a bank account in Singapore. So this is all the the LTD step that I could I could suggest. And um, obviously we still obviously this still can be tracked down on the transaction because it's still under the uh, the management or or Bank Negara Malaysia is still able to track. Then one of the bonus points is that you have, uh, I just say that you have the HSBC Premium account. So one of the, the key, re key requirements of opening HSBC Premium account in Malaysia is that you have to have at least about 200k ringgit or you have at least amount, you know, selling amount of around 15,000 ringgit or 20,000 ringgit. So one of the key benefits about the HSBC account is that you can open HSBC 
account around the world which means in include Hong Kong Singapore UK and also other many region like US you could think of and then for example if you want to open a, you know HBC in Singapore is that you could reach out to your local relationship manager so they will arrange the, the accounts opening setup and that's it so I hope you can you know consider that these are the, the countries or region that allow yourself to open offshore bank account by simulation so yes we have reached to the conclusion of the video I hope you can take some conclusions on why you could open an offshore bank account and there are certain requirements that you could open and certain countries that you can consider also depending on depending on whichever you you can think of and so yeah uh, if you have any further questions please let me know in the comments i will see you guys next time see you bye bye take care